Remember when the experience a game presented went beyond actually being in-game? Your immersion in a game's universe once began before any narrative or gameplay. The world building began in the menus. The menus and UI were a part of the overall experience. They were the warm-up act before the main show. They primed your brain for the tone and the atmosphere of the universe that you were about to dive into. They said it was Cuba. What happened in Cuba? But nowadays, it feels like much of the passion and thought that used to go into designing menus this way just isn't there anymore. In many modern games, UIs are merely deemed as a conduit to get you into the game as fast as possible. It's as if they've been intentionally stripped of their visual appeal and theming. Now, although functionality is without a doubt the number one most important element of a UI or a menu, there's a lot more that can and I think should be considered in their design than how fast they can get you from point A, the start screen, to point B, the game. Or nowadays, the shop. That said, I do find it ironic how in recent years, both UI theming and also functionality seem to have taken pretty significant hits. I mean, all you need to do is compare Modern Warfare 2 and Halo Infinite to their respective predecessors, and you can see how far they've fallen, and that's something that honestly really disappoints me. Don't get me wrong, there are so many other elements of modern gaming that disappoint me more than this. Monetization, unpolished content, botched launches, live service, boring progression, the list is never ending. But because I grew up playing games that put so much emphasis on their menus and their UI design, good menu design has really become a soft spot for me over the years. And I mean, after all, being out of game in the menus is as much a part of the experience as being in game actually playing. And what's interesting is this decline in UI design goes beyond just games. I mean, console UIs over the years seem to have declined massively and for similar reasons. So I guess now is the best time to start talking about how menus and UIs have declined over the years because so far this video has just been me reminiscing about better times. The two main areas of decline over the years have been theming and functionality and both are equally as important for the overall experience. After all, first impressions are everything and the first thing you see and use when you first boot up a game is the menu the UI, and as such, it should thematically prepare you for what you're about to experience. When a UI is themed well, you feel like you're in the game's universe from the moment you load it up. There's no delay between choosing to play the game and being immersed in it. The menus and UI are designed with the main themes and emotions of the game in mind in order to prime your brain for the experience that you're about to go through. And honestly, there's no better way to show just how effective this can be than to take a look at some prime examples. Browsing Halo 2's menu is an ethereal experience. Everything from the loading screens to the background, UI elements, scrolling glyphs, transitions and even UI sounds make you feel like you're tapped into a foreign terminal, observing a mysterious race of schematics, ancient and incredibly enigmatic, whilst the blue hue and somber music give off feelings of sadness and melancholy. Black Ops 1 opens with you strapped down to a chair in a CIA interrogation room, disorientated and confused by the stacks of screens playing looping footage, the bright white lights, the ventilator aerating off beside you, and the figure interrogating you from behind the glass. You then switch to zombies and this shadowy figure walks out, and in comes a zombie, banging on the glass trying to get into you, all the while you're still strapped to the chair, with footage looping on the screens. However, you can break those straps, it's an interactive play space. You can free yourself and explore the room and even access a CIA terminal in the corner in which codes can be entered to access various accounts, unlock campaign intel, and even play a text-based adventure game. Gears of War's menus exuded terror, horror, and brutality. Ominous in every way from its heavy use of reds, the film green and the grittiness of the UI elements, and the flickering omen 
ever present in the background. Metal Gear Solid 2's menus feel like I've tapped into one of the Big Shell's nodes, or like I'm interfacing with some kind of technology on Arsenal Gear. It's advanced, technological, and almost imitates the feeling of a futuristic BIOS that boots before the main operating system. Dead Space's menu is like using a console on the Ishimura. The UI, sound, and transition design are all identical, but it's also really unnerving. The screen in the background, with glitchy imagery of carcasses mutilated and diseased, flickering glyphs, unsettling sounds, murmuring and whispering send chills down your spine before you even hit play. Call of Duty World at War's menu is harrowing. The gritty, grayscale, slow, war-torn environment panels in the background, combined with the menu theme with a German woman singing, Good soldier, good soldier. Die with me, die with me, die with me, is nothing short of haunting. It invokes the horror of senseless loss, death, and destruction wrought throughout the world during World War II. Okay, I think you get the point now. All these UIs immerse you in their game's universes and settings before any gameplay or narrative has even begun. They are the primer for the experience, in almost every way from UI elements to sound design and even the colours they adopt. They prepare you for the tone of the game by feeling like a cohesive part of its universe. Like something that actually exists within it, rather than a bunch of thematically disconnected buttons that you need to click in order to start playing the game. But nowadays, I find that UIs tend not to be designed with this level of cohesion in mind. For the most part, the priorities of game dev have shifted. Far less of an emphasis is put on making the best first impression possible nowadays, and instead, focus is put on dangling the carrot, so to speak. How often do you hear, don't worry, this game's gonna be good in a year or two, or don't worry, this game's gonna pull a No Man's Sky and have like an Apex Legends style resurgence. I mean, hell, games even market their roadmaps and future updates before the game has even released. The normalization of live service, of launching games devoid of content and broken but fixing them over time, has drastically reduced the impact of the first impression. When gaming at large deems it okay for games to launch unfinished and then slowly be patched up over time, that signals to developers and publishers that a good first impression isn't as important as it used to be because people are going to come back to the game at some point anyway, right? So why spend so much time and effort and resources on forming the most perfect first impression when instead you play the long game and hope that they return in the future? And hell, menus and UIs even get overhauled over time now. What little theming is still present gets altered to fit the theme of a season, so there's even less reason to come out the gate swinging with a strong UI presence if you're just going to have to go back and redesign the entire thing every quarter or every few months anyway. And this is why I think we've seen this transition to lackluster menu design over the years. It just isn't as much of a priority as it used to be. And I think the same kind of rationale can be applied to console UIs as well. One of my favourite aesthetics that humanity as a species have ever created is the original Xbox dashboard. It goes, number one, gothic aesthetic, number two, Halo Forerunner aesthetic, and then number three, the original Xbox dashboard aesthetic. The Xbox was Microsoft's biggest and boldest investment since the inception of their company. It was stepping into a new and rapidly evolving frontier, and to reflect how it pushed the boundaries of gaming technology, its debut console featured a super advanced and enigmatic looking techno sci-fi dashboard. It had that really cool, early noughties, almost Matrix-esque edge to it, and its ambience almost invoked a fear of the unknown. It was unsettling and made you feel like you were navigating a piece of hyper-advanced hardware that wasn't made by us. The Xbox team even went as far as including real sounds from NASA transmissions from the Apollo mission days in the ambience of the dashboard, giving it an even more ethereal and alien feel. Then you compare that to the current Xbox dashboard. There's no stylization, 
There's no ambience. There's not even a single bit of theming. It's literally just generic boxes with ads plastered everywhere. They did add the option to edit the background to an animated version of the original Xbox dashboard, which granted I think is actually really cool, but the UI elements and overall UI are still so boring in comparison. And the same can be said for PlayStation's dashboards as well. Granted, in some areas, it does seem as though there was an effort made to theme it up a little bit, but overall, if you compare the PS5 dashboard to the PS2's, the same kind of downgrades happened. The PS5's is hyper-sanitized and is full of ads and promotions, whereas the PS2's dashboard feels like I'm stepping into this ethereal techno dreamscape, mysterious and beyond our comprehension as humans, and that was our portal to experiences that would shift the boundaries of reality as we knew it. The design of these menus and UIs felt like their own little universes, but now that's all been stripped away, and what's left is just a corporate hollow shell of what once was. Now, if we could just return to games for a moment, I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on the design shift in video game loading screens as well. Now, this is an element of menu design that's always varied heavily based on the style of game it's for. For example, even the Call of Duty games with the best menu designs still had pretty boring loading screens, let's be honest here. Whereas some games that didn't really push the boat out with their menus or UI that much, like Resident Evil, for example, had iconic, immersive, and very thematically fitting loading screens. They also serve different purposes as well, and with that comes varying levels of flexibility in how they can be designed. Because their large and interconnected worlds require lots of loading, games like Dead Space and Mass Effect have elevator sequences instead of loading screens, where the loading screen is masked by a restricted gameplay section where the player is still given a degree of agency, however is more restricted than being in the open environment. But then you have games like Halo, where each level is entirely separate from the previous, and thus a seamless transition between them isn't possible. So, the developers chose to create stylized, aesthetic loading screens that, despite just really being a glorified loading bar, actually tried to uphold the theming of the game and be somewhat entertaining to sit there and watch. Halo's loading screens in particular, from Combat Evolved all the way through to Halo 4, all had immaculate theming that gave off a wide range of emotions, from ancient mystery to sci-fi militarism, depending on which game they're referring to. But post Halo 4, MCC and onwards, Halo's loading screens really took a hit. Now, all we have is a small animated logo or circle, and a PNG that may or may not change every now and then. Truth be told, I honestly don't know why loading screens have taken such a hit. Some games like Modern Warfare 2 and Fortnite allow you to unlock new ones, which I guess could be why, but Halo doesn't, really, and besides a shift in priorities or maybe lack of development time since Halo 4, I really can't explain why Halo's loading screens are so aggressively lackluster now, but I don't think it's a coincidence that their downfall has coincided with the downfall of menus and UIs in general. But a pretty UI can only go so far. The yin to menu theming's yang is functionality. A UI can be as aesthetic and pretty and cool to navigate as it wants, but if it does a bad job at getting you from point A to point B, then it's a bad UI, and some of my favourite long-term games suffer from this as well. Halo Infinite and Modern Warfare 2 are the shining examples of UIs that lack heavily in the functionality department. Although, granted, Modern Warfare 2's is so bad that it makes Halo Infinite's look perfect. Going into specifics is honestly a waste of time at this point. People, myself included, have critiqued both these UIs to the end of the earth, so there's nothing really new that can be said. So instead of focusing on them specifically, let's instead look at the kind of general design philosophies that UIs and menus have adopted that stunt functionality and accessibility. Firstly, modern gaming has this aggressive fascination with side-scrolling UIs and boxes. This style of menu design is massively inefficient. The same amount of information is displayed on screen as in previous designs, except to display that information now takes up far more real estate on the screen, and because most of the time the boxes on the screen are in fact rectangular, they also take up more horizontal space. 
you then couple that with a side-scrolling UI and drastically less information can be displayed on the screen at once. Instead, you have to spend ages scrolling to the side until you eventually find what you're looking for. And this issue is only further exacerbated by the amount of content in modern games. Where they're lacking in macro content like modes and staple features, modern games are packed full of micro content like cosmetics and personalization features, and the volume of this content only increases as the live service goes on, so what you end up with is a UI that just takes years upon years upon years to scroll through to finally reach what you want. And where does this style come from? mobile games and tablets. Ever since Windows 8 adopted the tile design so it could better suit tablets, every user interface under the sun has begun to shift toward it, and as much as I wish I could quote Paramore and say that you are the only exception. Unfortunately, I can't. But just like how UIs began to imitate mobile games when they were drawing in the mass audiences, Modern Warfare 2 has begun what is likely to be the next stage in the downfall of menus and UIs. The streaming service age. Every man and his dog uses one, two, if not five or six streaming services nowadays. Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Prime Video, Peacock, HBO Go, BritBox. There are a billion and one streaming services that have entered the entertainment market to try and replace conventional cable TV. All their UIs are absolutely identical. Side-scrolling UIs with massive boxes and obnoxiously large thumbnails behind them. Totally homogenized. And because so many people use these streaming services, Infinity Ward decided to have Hulu UI designers malform Call of Duty's UI into a streaming service UI. And the results are, I'm sure you've heard, abysmal. Convoluted, messy, unintuitive, inaccessible, and just downright confusing. Just about everything that you don't want from a UI's functionality, the Modern Warfare 2 UI has. And I fear, I really fear, that other games are going to follow suit in the future because of the popularity of streaming services. What needs to happen is a return to the glorious drop-down menus of old. Classic Call of Duty games, Halo 3, Reach and 4, Battlefield 4, all games that embraced drop-down menus in varying manners, and all games that had fluid, efficient, and easy-to-navigate UIs. Gaming needs to embrace the drop-down menu once more. Gaming UIs are already becoming far too similar for my liking. Individuality is being slowly eroded in favour of making a UI that the mainstream masses recognise and are used to, and I honestly think that's only going to get worse in the future. And because of the strict way these UIs are designed, theming is limited as well, because they have to conform to very specific predisposed design philosophies, as opposed to allowing designers to kind of dip into elements of the game and its universe for inspiration. You think about Halo 2's UI, there's no way that if Halo 2 were to release again today and have a streaming service UI, it could adopt the same themes and layout and aesthetic as Halo 2 used to. The two just aren't compatible. UIs have really gone the way of the logo in recent years. They're far too like visually simplified and sanitized and almost clean nowadays. I miss when UIs were grittier and messier in an aesthetic sense without being messy or convoluted in a functional sense. Another issue I have with modern UIs, with Modern Warfare 2s in particular, is just how cluttered they can be. The combination of less information being displayed on screen at once, and also the monetization in modern games being aggressively pushed on you, makes for a user interface that feels more like interactive marketing than a video game menu. These things are plastered with ads for the store, the battle pass, limited time bundles, and microtransactions first and foremost, while other, actually important features, seem to be buried beneath all of these details. Maybe this is just me, but UIs nowadays also feel a lot more unstable. Like, I don't ever remember having any issues with World at War's UI crashing, or with Halo Reach's UI lagging and not loading. Maybe it's because everything's online nowadays, and thus is hosted on servers as opposed to being stored client-side, so the game constantly has to connect to the internet to load UI elements or something. I don't know if it's that, no idea, but UIs in modern games just they seem to break a lot more than they used to in older games. Overall, functionality seems to be suffering from games' intent to design menus that don't look, feel, or navigate like video game menus. 
This insistence to bring design philosophies from completely different sectors over to gaming does it no good in the theming department or the functionality department. The reason we have such fond memories of classic video game menus is because a conscious effort was clearly put into making them feel like a cohesive part of the world that we were about to experience, whilst also remaining intuitive to navigate. I want UIs and menus to make me feel something again. I want UIs to invoke emotion, menus that immerse me before the gameplay even begins, and out-of-game experiences that still feel like they're rooted in the universe. So, I'm going to throw it to you guys now. Do you agree with me that video game UIs and menus feel like they've gone through a downfall in recent years? What's your favourite video game menu or UI, and do you think we'll ever reach the dizzying heights of Halo 2, Black Ops 1, or Gears of War ever again? I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments. And so, with that said, let's round this video out here. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This is another branch out video, so if you enjoyed, then of course, make sure you show some support down below. And if you somehow haven't done yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Your boy would uh, greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, yeah, let's round it out there. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the continued support over there, as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.